As in China, Chinese Americans are also observing the Lunar New Year with lots of pride and celebration. Close to 4 million Chinese Americans now live in the United States. Their main population centers are New York and California. And while the Chinese have played an important role in the history and development of America, over the years it's been a struggle to assert their identity. That is changing, and there was a major breakthrough in New York recently. We'll talk about that in a moment, and we'll also discuss some of the big social issues and challenges that Chinese Americans are confronting today. Joining me here in the studio is Chilling Tong. She is the founder and CEO of the International Leadership Foundation. She's also on the board of the American Chamber of Commerce. And joining us from New York is Neely Rosick. She's a New York State Assemblywoman. Welcome to both of you to the show. Thank Chilling you. Tong, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. How important is this development in New York, the fact that the Lunar New Year is now going to be commemorated with an official holiday? Well, I think this is very, very good news, especially from cultural awareness and a political progress point of view. You know, Lunar New Year is the most important day for Chinese Americans, especially for Chinese family. We get together, we celebrate, you know, we kind of uh, think about our ancestors. It's kind of show our tradition, our cultural, and our heritage. And I think the most significant about this new law is because uh, um, you know, things matter in daily life. And the Asian American issues that matter to the uh, mainstream America. So passing this law means a lot to us. It shows our impact and our influence. Nearly happy New Year to you as well. Uh, New York is, of course, one of the most diverse cities in the world. How important is the Chinese community to New York? It is a huge integral part of the New York City culture and economy and a huge part of not just Queens, but all five of the boroughs. Uh, Chiang Tong, there are almost four million Chinese Americans, as yeah. we uh, mentioned in the introduction there. Do you believe that their contribution to this country, to their being Chinese Americans, is really appreciated? Oh, definitely. Like, uh, you know, each year, the president of the United States always have a proclamation for the Lunar New Year. Even like uh, a few days ago in California, state senate passed a re resolution to recognize Lu Lunar New Year as an official festival. Uh, 2006 in Maryland, Governor uh, Ehrlich already, you know, uh, signed a bill to recognize Lunar New Year's, uh, you know, uh, as a commemoration. Uh, the things behind that, we have to think about that. Although it's important to have those bills, those resolutions, the thing is who made those happen? Like uh, uh, in New York, Ron King is Korean-American, and his wife is Chinese-American. He, he pushed the bill. In Maryland, because of uh, uh, Assembly uh, Delegate Susan Lee, now is she is Senator Susan Lee, she pushed the bill. And then, so just so on and so on. If we have Asian American to serve in the political arena, they will help to bring those issues to be recognized. And you will definitely see their profile rising as well, yes. right? Uh, Neely, you know, we've sometimes heard uh, Asian Americans, Chinese Americans being referred to as the model minority, quote unquote. Is that accurate or is that a bit of a patronizing comment? I would say that, you know, they're a huge part of city life and state life here, um, whether it's, you know, idealized in the education or uh, cultural sense, I don't know. But um, I think that recognizing the Lunar New Year is the first step in really giving that community the cultural and traditional deference that they deserve. Well, you know, you were instrumental in bringing this bill to uh, the Congress or to the Assembly in New York. Um, why? I mean, what drove you to make sure that this was a holiday a, a commemoration that was recognized? You know, it's um, all about religious tolerance and cultural diversity. I represent a district that is 52 percent Asian American in parts of eastern Queens, Fresh Meadows and Flushing specifically. And having, you know, that ability to close a school or giving a local school board that decision-making power really empowers local communities, and it's the right and progressive thing to be doing. And Chilling, in many respects, you know, many countries regard racial diversity as a huge blessing. Many countries would like to have such diversities among their own population as well. But here in the United States, for Chinese Americans, has it been a challenge in terms of the kind of racism that they've faced? Well, uh, I, 
I would like to not to use a racist in this word mm -hmm. because in every different ethnic group, they have some kind of stereotype. But I think for uh, Asian Americans, uh, people re all recognize were very successful economically. For example, the, uh, each year or generate about 500 billion. The amount we generate from those business, Asian American Pacific Islander, equals the combination of African American, Hispanic American, and Native American. That's a significant contribution mm -hmm. to the economy of this country. So, uh, you know, sometimes people have some, saying some stereotype, uh, racist. I really think it's kind of, or uh, we have not engaged in the mainstream society yet. We're very behind politically, you know, or entertainment world, or even like a media. You know, you're one of the very few. And uh, like a sports, like intelligence, like a foreign service, all those things, we really need Asian American to get engaged before, except like a professional engineer. That's good, they are doing very good in those fields. But I think they have to diverse themselves to be recognized. So I would say sometimes they have stereotype, but sometimes that's true about the Asian Americans. No, is that happening in you know, all those different uh, kind of career paths that you just spoke about? Is that happening among Chinese Americans? Yeah, I think so, because like a workforce, for the past 50 years, our workforce has increased about 20 times. But if you look at the, you know, uh, we do not serve in the, any executive rank. We have very few Asian Americans to be on the board of major corporations. Mm -hmm. Of course they're behind. Like a political, it, it, by proportion, we should have a 26th Asian American member of Congress, but we only have a 13. But good news is Asian American, they are aware of this. Like last year, 2014, uh, in the United States, we have a 95 state elected uh, legislature or a senator or assemblyman in 19 states. So I think that's very good news. Like in California, we have three statewide officers. We have a Jiang Chen as treasurer. We have a Betty E as a controller. So this all kind of break the stereotype of Asian Americans. Nearly, as I said at the outset of the interview, uh, New York is one of the most diverse cities in the world. Uh, does that diversity bring with it its own challenges when you try to govern a city like that? Uh, and you know, you're in a position to, to make changes that, that will count significantly. Absolutely, and it's really all about coalition building across communities, whether cultural or religious. Um, you know, this bill that would allow school boards to close schools not doesn't just cover the Lunar New Year, but it also covers holidays such as Diwali, which is important to the South Asian communities of uh, New York City. So it's really about, you know, empowering local communities, but also building coalitions around that so that all sides of um, neighborhoods and um, cultures really feel integrated and a part of local government. And what is your view on uh, what uh, Shilling Tong was just talking about, more political representation for minority groups in cities like New York? We should be doing more. We can always be doing more. You know, I say that 22% of the state legislature is women, and really that should be 50%. So we have a lot of work to do um, in terms of broadening diversity at the local, state, and federal government. I agree wholeheartedly. Now, Chilling Chung, you know, for instance, this holiday that we have in New York will be commemorated by Chinese Americans but it will also be commemorated by people who are not Chinese Americans in school as well, wouldn't they? Yes, definitely. I think for the significance of this bill, it's a kind of unified, all or community, uh, uh, supported by Republican Democrats. And uh, for Chinese American in general, I think when they have uh, uh, try to involve politics, sometimes they just have politicians to come through the event, have a picture taken. They really never care about the bills. And this is very significant because of all the community they supported. In California, that happened last year. There's a bill, it's a, a SC, uh, SCA 5. It's kind of affirmative uh, action amendment. Because for like a Proposition 209, the state you know, does not allow any discrimination uh, in, in terms of a, a racial, right. you know, uh, ethnic background, and in terms of uh, operating of public education, school, and contracting. But so when SC5 want to overturn that, the whole Chinese American communities are very angry. So they'll all come to lobby that and make a, you know, uh, this bill die. Okay, well, we're gonna have to look at that and see what happens. 
Chilling Tong, thanks for joining us. Thank Nidhi you. Rosic in New York, thank you for joining us as well.